Hello and welcome back to the Not Old Firm YouTube channel. My name is Ben Banks. Here to look ahead to the weekend's fixtures in the Premiership on what has been another week of talking points, twists, turns, transfers. It's all been happening in Scotland's top flight. And we'll look ahead to a full card of games spread right across from Saturday afternoon to Monday evening. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so. That'd be much appreciated. Just get straight into it because there's so much to talk about. On the Saturday, there's three games. Dundee United v St Johnson, the Tayside Derby at Tannadice. Kilmarnock v Hamilton in another match in the bottom six at Rugby Park. St Mirren v Motherwell, potential new, well not potential now, confirmed manager in the dugout for that one in Motherwell's camp. Then on the Sunday, Aberdeen versus Rangers, as well as Livingston versus Ross County, which has been moved to the Sunday from Saturday 3pm due to the fall in temperatures in and around Livingston to try and keep that game on. That has been moved back 24 hours. Before we then get to the Monday night, where quarter to eight kickoff for Celtic versus Hibs. Sunday United versus St Johnston is the first game we'll look at. A couple of changes in the sides for Callum Davidson. He's obviously lost Danny McNamara, a really influential player this season, it recalled by Millwall. But in his place coming again from Millwall is James Brown. So he comes in to provide defensive cover for the Saints. Ahead of a Fairly crucial game, I suppose. They are only two points off the bottom. St Johnston, theoretically, could find themselves at the bottom, potentially. I mean, if Hamilton, Mullow and Ross County all win this weekend, St Johnston could find themselves bottom. So it's a big game for them. They'll be looking for points against the Dundee United side, who are starting to make a wee bit of a gap, albeit they're four points ahead of seventh place St Mirren while they occupy sixth spot. But St Mirren do have three games in hand on them, so... Dundee United will be looking to sort of improve that gap while they have the chance before St Mirren do or maybe not get to play for those six points. Uh, so it's always tight, these games. So that will be uh, one to watch on Saturday as well. Paul McMullen uh, leaving Dundee United for Dundee. A massive journey for him to his next club, all of a 30-second walk. So a bit of a blow, I suppose. You don't want to really lose one of your who has been a, a good player, it has to be said, for Dundee United to your city rivals. So an exit at Dundee United there. Kilmarnock versus Hamilton Ackies is the second game on the Saturday. Den Danny Whitehall signing a new contract at Rugby Park, just as I went to record this. But obviously the big news at Kilmarnock this week is the departure, or soon-to-be departure, of Eamon Brophy. He signed a pre-contract with St Mirren in a really bitter blow for Kilmarnock. There's been big clubs after him. Aberdeen, Hibs were just two of the clubs linked with him this window, but in previous windows because of his exploits that have got him to a Scotland cap at one stage, he has been linked with moves to the English Championship and English League One. But form has sort of dipped a wee bit this season. Perhaps Alex Dyer's style of play, not quite fitting the way he wants to play. Alex Dyer wanting to play with a big target man, and that's just not suited to Brophy. But he goes to Jim Goodwin's St Mirren and Jim Goodwin is delighted to have captured the Kilmarnock ball. Yeah, delighted to, to finally get the, the deal done for Raymond. Um, he's one that we we asked about last January and um, you know got told he wasn't available. Obviously, you know, uh, Kirk Broadfoot went the other way uh, before the window shut last January. So we thought we would try and uh, get a deal done for Brophy at the same time. Um but no, this time around, just delighted to to get him on a pre-contract, and um, you know I've got to congratulate uh, the board and and Tony Fitzpatrick for um, you know getting big blow for Kilmarnock and Eamon Brophy might have played his last game for Kilmarnock and probably won't feature against his former side Hamilton Ackies. Alex Dyer saying that. Perhaps he doesn't need to play him or doesn't want to play him now. He doesn't want to play players who don't want to be at Kilmarnock and it's very clear that is not where Brophy wants to be. And as I understand it, uh, Kilmarnock and St Mirren are currently working out how to sort of make way for Brophy to head to Paisley this window instead of waiting to the summer where he will sign a three-year deal. For Hamilton, they'll be looking to build on some fairly decent-ish form in recent games have kept a couple of clean sheets the 0-0 draw away to St Johnson before a thumping 3-0 victory over Motherwell last weekend a really convincing one that was really impressed with Aki's albeit Muller were poor on the day perhaps still a bit of disarray from 
all that had gone on at Fur Park in the week previous with the resignation of Stephen Robinson. But they looked really impressive. All well, they did have a couple of defeats in the middle at two 0 and three 0 defeats to Livingston and Celtic. But the game before that, they beat another team around them in Ross County two 0 So the last three or four games they've had against teams around them. I mean, they've beat Kilmarnock in recent weeks, Ross County, draw with St Johnston, beaten Mullow. They're doing what Hamilton always do and grind out the results when it matters. So would I be surprised to see them get a victory here? Absolutely not. St Mirren versus Motherwell is the last game on the Saturday. St Mirren looking to build on their decent form of late as well as perhaps snatching a point last week because of Danny Rogers' bizarre error. Away to Kilmarnock, which finished one each. Uh, but Jamie McGrath is looking forward to the game. He's been at St Mirren for almost a year now, and given all that's gone on in the world since then, he can't quite believe it's been that long. No, it's been the quickest year I think I've ever had. Um, it feels strange even saying I'm here a year. It doesn't feel like that at all. Um, obviously, I was only here for about two, just one, uh, over two months when uh, COVID started kicking in. So um, that did disrupt my time here. But um, no, I'm... I'm every minute here so far and feeling really settled as well so um yeah but it's it's strange to say i'm here a year Aris. ah we've kind of experienced it ourselves uh, they're in a bit of a rotten form at the minute but um yeah it's they're they'll be looking to get out of it like we were um a few few weeks or a few months back so um things can quickly turn and um obviously don't know about their manager situation but um yeah, it's going to be a very, very tough game. They've quality right throughout their, throughout their squad. And um, yeah, we're just getting ready for a big game. Yeah, it was important to get that uh, point at the weekend. Um, yeah, like you said, probably wasn't our best performance, but we grinded out a, a one-all draw away from home, which is not always the worst case scenario. Um, obviously, we go into every game looking to try and get a win if we can, but a point away from home isn't the worst case scenario. And um, I thought... We were decent, maybe back to mid, back to middle in the game, but um, yeah, I don't know if we created enough to win the game, but yeah, I think a draw was a fair result. But um, yeah, looking forward to this weekend, the you know, game at home against Middle. Um, just getting ready for that. But of course, heading into this game, the main talking point is Graham Alexander's arrival at Mullerwell. The former Salford City manager former manager at Scunthorpe and Fleetwood Town as well. He's a former Scotland international with 40 caps. He is the man to replace Stephen Robinson. It's fairly competitive interview process has been completed. Tommy Wright, Simon Grayson and Keith Lasley all interviewed for the top post at Motherwell. But it looked, Alexander has won the race for that and obviously got to Hear from him, you'll hear from him in a wee bit as well. Speak very confidently and impressively about the job at hand at Mullow. He doesn't want to make wholesale changes. You won't see 20 in, 20 out this window. He wants to work with a group of players. He'll assess what problems that need fixed. He does concede that there are a couple of Mullow joint bottom. They've got a squad that's underperforming. But, I mean, I think what sums up Graham Alexander's work ethic, or at least in the early stages, is he could have decided to sit this weekend out. There was an option on the table for him to allow Keith Lasley, who had been interim manager, to take charge of the well against St Mirren this weekend. But he decided to drive up three hours down the road from England into Mullow, sorted all his uh, paperwork, all the usual announcements that comes with being a new manager, and then obviously was presented to the media as I record this on Friday afternoon. was very impressed with him um, when he spoke. He spoke at length about his goals for Mullow, both short-term and long-term. What he wants to do in the transfer window, if anything, obviously perhaps people thinking with a new manager at Mull, of course, comes change, but perhaps people thinking there's going to be nine or ten transfers. At least the way he was speaking, that doesn't seem like it'll be the case. Of course, there will be some, but perhaps not the wholesale changes that some are expecting. But definitely made a decent impression on his first presentation as Mullerwell manager, but the talking is having to be done on the part for Mull and it needs to be done urgently. Without a win since Halloween and coming into a really tough run of fixtures, St Mirren away tomorrow is going to be a really hard task for the well. But then after that, they've got Rangers at home, Pataudry to go to against Aberdeen, a midweek tie against Ross County, Dundee United at home, which is perhaps one they're looking at as a really crucial one to get three points in, Celtic away and Hamilton at home, perhaps that one on 13th of February, a really massive one for the well, depending on how fixtures pan out between now and then. And of course, 
There'll also be Scottish Cup action in there as well as he looks to try and make his mark in that competition. So it's out of the frying pan into the fire a wee bit for him. He's rejected jobs in England to take this on. He rejected jobs in England before this one came available. He wanted to wait and see if a new challenge presented itself. It has done in the form of Motherwell Football Club. So Mullow fans be hoping that he is a success at Fur Park. And here's a bit of an extended look at how he handled himself in his first press conference as Mullow manager. Yeah, congratulations on the appointment. What, what is it about Mullow and why, why he went back to um, It's something I haven't done. You know, even though I've played for Scotland internationally, I've never played here domestically or obviously coached and managed. And it's always a fascination for me you know, because obviously I've had a lot of exposure to Scottish football, Scottish players, Scottish managers. You know, Best ones I've played in the Scottish, even down south, you know, the North End and, and Burnley. So, um, you know, that there was that side of it. I think, you know, when you, you look at roles and what you can bring to it, can you improve it? Can you um, achieve success, you know, for the club? And um, I think after speaking to the, the board uh, a couple of days ago, a few days ago, when we had the interview, it was just it sort of went my appetite to. Really try and get the job. You know, I, you know, I wanted the job, but after speaking to them, it was like, you know, that I think it would be a, a great place for myself and Chris to come and, and hopefully, um, you know, achieve the success that they want. And um, you know, it's uh, you know, working in the SBL, you know, I just can't wait to get that. How different do you think it is going to be from, from your previous management? Um. I think the pressure to win games is always there in any um, managerial role, so I don't think that will change. Um, I think that's what we love about the job. We always want to win games, whether you're a player, a coach, or manager. Um, and I just, I just see that there's obviously a difference in the fixture list and that because I, I was, you know, I've spoke to a couple of people I know really well. I actually spoke to, to Stephen Robinson as well before I got I took the job because I knew he had managed in England as well because I. I Teams have played against it, and I just, I just wanted a, a, a feel of what the difference was, and the fixture list is certainly a big one because you know in England it's Saturday, Tuesday, basically six months of the year, and it's a little bit less here, so you get more coaching time with the players, which which he found was was brilliant, and um, and and that that's more it really. I think I think it's a it's a different uh, role than I have before because the three clubs I managed before it's about winning promotions and getting to the next league. Obviously, that's not achievable because we're in the top league. So, uh, you know, I'm going to have to get my head around what um, what success, but I'll, I'll pretty much know what that is. You've just come in, obviously, so you I suppose, have just met the players. Mm. Do you have what you need in the dressing room when you look at another well, current position without a league win since the game of October? Um, I think there's always a, a change when there's a, a change of manager, regardless of whether it's a successful manager or, or one that's that struggled. Um, I've followed Bob in my previous jobs. Um, I think uh, players, the, the dynamic changes and everything. But certainly, one of the attractions for this this role, this job, was the quality that I felt was in that squad. And, and to be fair, Stephen told me that as well. Um, and I think there's always room for improvement. The league doesn't run um, over, over time. So, but that's not to say that there's bad players or players that are not good enough for this level because I believe there is. I've been told that as well by people who know them better than me. Um, and, and I just I just feel it's there's obviously been a problem or an issue um, or I wouldn't be here. Um, it's my uh, role and my job, my responsibility to find out what the issue was and, and try and fix it. And uh, But I've, like you say, I've only drove up last night and took one training session today but I, I, I've got to say I was really impressed with the quality that I saw. What's the one piece of advice from Stephen that you know, will stick with you? Um, be careful around you guys. <laughs> 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 no, he, uh, no, he was, um, do you know what, he, he, was, he couldn't speak highly enough about people. You know, I think, I think he, you know, management is such a, a stressful role and everything. I've, he, he's only been here previously as managerial role and he'd been here five and a half years and he just, he just felt it was time for a change for everybody. He said, uh, but he, he said he couldn't speak highly enough about the people, the, the club, the fans, and, and, and the players as well. But he said for some reason or not, it's, it's not quite working at the moment. So, um, so he, 
he knows I'm an experienced, well, you know, relatively experienced manager and had success uh, down in there. He just talked about the the, um, the people at the club because, because you know you can see it come from the outside and you can read reports and that, but speak to someone who's been in there on, in the ground and and, um, and work with these people day in day out. You know, he, honestly, he was, he was so complimentary about everyone and. and I think it's a big thing in, in football and as in life is working with good people and um, you know, I've only been here 24 hours but it, it's been so welcoming by, by everybody and uh, it's, um, it's been a great first day. You've played and managed in different levels in England, where do you think you'll be looking to bring players up from? Uh, I, I, <laughs> I know what the, the finances are in England and, and we won't be getting players from the Premier League or, or the Championship. That, that's, that's, Truth, really, and um, I, th I think uh, I did actually. Robert, that, that was one of the things he did say. You know, generally it's League Two or League One players that are probably not playing every, every single week. But for me, there's good players in Scotland as well, and there's good players in Ireland and, and everything like that. So I think the game now is is global, and um, there's no uh, reason why we can't attract good players to play at a good level. Um, but I want to find out about the players we already have first. You know, I think it's important for me to. Give them the opportunity and, and actually come in with a. I did. I didn't actually ask him about individual players. I didn't want that information really. I, I've analysed the team you know, before taking the role and you know, in the games and stuff. But I wanted to learn about them myself and, and with Chris and um, and if there was any negative sides of any of those players, they could have a fresh start with me. So um, I think it's important to do that. And seeing that, will you expect to bring players to the club in January? Um, I don't know really. I, I think I think there's scope to. Well, there is scope to. Um, I need to ascertain what the squad is capable of, which players obviously want to be here for the long term as well, and then sort of be reactive to that. But I, or but there's there's positions where look the team hasn't scored enough goals. It's conceded too many. It's, you know, it's a recipe for not winning games. So we have to fix that. It's both ends of the pitch. But I think the player there's the. the full come with a, a group of players that can actually achieve improvements at both ends of the pitch. But I always feel a fresh face, a new face, some stronger competition, always you know, sparked a dynamic in the squad that can be uh, positive. But um, I've got a really open mind about what we actually need at the moment. Whenever you players will be attracting interest from others as well. Is yeah. it important to ensure as a priority for you to, to tie them down to contracts? Uh, not, not necessarily tie them down to contracts. Look, I, I know there's there's been speculation around two or three of the players, um, good players. What I've seen today in training, I can see why they're good players and, and people are talking about. Them, but I've never seen any negativity. I didn't see any uh, anyone sulking. Everyone was positive about the training sessions. Looking forward to the game tomorrow. Um, but it, you know, I've came into the club and, and I haven't had any individual chats with any players or any staff. It's more been group because at the end of the day, it's not about me. Today, getting to know individuals about trying to get three points tomorrow. So that's all we focused on. And, and you know, going into next week when we've got a bit, a bit of space, a bit of time, that's when I'll have you know individual chats and, and get to know people and, and get their thoughts on their their current status. Because at the end of the day, you know, I'm aware of media attention and stuff, but I don't know what each individual is actually really thinking about. Themselves. In that respect, is it very beneficial for you to have Keith Lasley still here as well? Yeah, I think. I, I've come in, you know, I know Mo because I play, I play with Mo in the Scotland squad. I've uh, spoke to people about uh, when I spoke to Robbo and a couple of other people about Motherwell Cup. Spoke very highly of Keith and and, and the other staff as well, um, really highly. And I've gone into previous roles where um, there's not been enough staff, and I've brought my own. I've gone into uh, another job where all the staff are in place, and they continue to be in place for the whole time I was there because they were good people and good workers so all I'm bothered about is creating a good team on the pitch creating a good team off the pitch now if that's a good team off the pitch I don't see any reason to change anything but that's my responsibility is to create winning and successful teams and not individuals so but today you know we've um, gone great and it's been good to you know, I don't know Scottish football inside out, so certainly here and Mo and, and Craig Inchliffe have brought in information for me, you know, concerning St. Mirren and stuff. So going forward, like I am, I am fresh to this league, um, 
So I'm going to need that support. On to the Sunday then, Aberdeen versus Rangers. Aberdeen, always a one to watch on the football calendar when these two meet and they meet for the third time already this season. Aberdeen perhaps looking for a bit better than they did the last time when Rangers came to Taudry. Although the scoreline wasn't a massive one, Aberdeen obviously didn't really perform to the levels they know they can. Perhaps disappointingly for Aberdeen this week is the fact that it doesn't look like any new signings will be coming into Pataudry this this window. Of course, Derek McInnes saying in his pre-match notes that there just isn't scope to do any business. Gary mckay Stephen was linked with a return to Pataudry, but that has now fell to the wayside and he looks to be heading to Hearts by the time this is out. It's probably going to be confirmed whether he is... Uh, coming or going to Tyne Castle or not but it certainly looks likely uh, reports suggesting that a medical was due there on Friday morning so a bit of a blow that for Aberdeen Marley Watkins also won't be back he's going to stay at Bristol City after an injury so they are going with what they've got every manager looks to strengthen at least with one or two in January and whenever any transfer window comes about but Aberdeen will need to stick it with the players that they have got Livingston v Ross County is the other game on the Sunday a couple of bits of transfer news there Gavin Riley arriving from Carlisle United for Livingston. If you haven't checked out our exclusive interview with Gavin Riley from a few months ago, do check back on the channel for that. It's one of the first videos we uploaded when we launched this. It's a bit more interesting view now. He said then they would never rule out a move to Scotland. Perhaps nobody expected it to be three months later down the line. But good move for him, good move for Livingston. The last Queen, former Queen of the South striker to rock up at Livingston didn't do too badly, so they'll be hoping for similar with this one. John Hughes as well making a couple of signings before this as he heads to one of his former clubs, Anthony Andrew, perhaps the most high profile of them. The former Dundee United, Livingston, St Mirren, perhaps most notably in Scotland, Hamilton man has signed for Ross County to add a bit of a creative spark in their midfield experience as well as they look to survive in Scottish Games Premiership. So that one obviously got moved because of the the ice and fog and the snow and just Scottish winter in general as it causes havoc. I mean, in the Scottish Cup, there's already been a multitude of games called off there. And Livingston looking to beat the weather after their previous game against Aberdeen had also been called off. Uh, Livingston, of course, in the middle of a really hectic run of fixtures, they don't need any more congestion. So they were hoping that one does get ahead as planned. Then finally, on our card of fixtures, the Celtic versus Hibs, the controversial fixture, if you want to call it that. The fixture was moved because Celtic wanted to go to Dubai. Hibs weren't told about it. Leanne Dempster, the outgoing chief executive at Hibs, was fizzing about it, I think, to quote directly. And now Celtic have gone to Dubai for their winter training camp, and that's not exactly escape controversy either. But on the park, Hibs will be looking for much better than they've shown in recent weeks. The defeat against Rangers wasn't too worrying, obviously playing against a Rangers team that are ramping and Hibs probably could have taken a draw or something from that on another day, but the defeats to Ross County and Livingston 2-0 and 3-0 respectively have caused a bit of concern amongst the Hibs faithful in it. Even though Celtic have stuttered this season, it's far from an easy place to go, but perhaps a wee bit of more needle in this game, um, more than there usually would be between these two sides. But it's always a decent contest, a fiery contest, and Jack Ross is looking forward to the game. Um, well, they've obviously, um, in recent weeks, have, have changed their, their system. And um, there's a, even from the game at Easter Road, there's, there's probably personnel involved in the game who, who weren't featuring prominently at that time. So, although it wasn't that long ago, um, they've had those changes. Um, and I think that mentioned at the beginning about in recent weeks their performance level has been good so um, difficult match at the best of times I think they um, they know I think they've, they've spoken as a club about what they need to try and do over the rest of the season to give themselves a chance of competing for the championship so um, they'll look as, as this is the first opportunity to do it but for us we've been we've been competitive in both matches this season although we lost you know at Parkhead I thought the first 45 minutes we were we were really good in the game Um in the game, you still really said we, we probably feel as if we should have won the game. So, um, you know, that's given us cause for optimism as well. But certainly for us, the focus is on making sure we return to um, to the form we've been in the main this season and not not the performance level of the last couple of matches. So that's all we've got time for on this preview. We hope you have enjoyed. Do remember to subscribe to the channel and like the video. We'll get 
plenty of content coming out. Uh, keep up to date with all the transfer news that is confirmed as and when it happens. Any wee bits and information we hear as well, we will pass that on to you. Lots of exclusive stuff coming as well. I think on the morning this goes up on our website, there will be an interview with Ashwin Raman, 17-year-old in India, currently working as a part-time scout and analyst for Dundee United. A really fascinating story he has. So I think that should be on the website as you're watching this. So do go check out and read a bit about his story. As well as that, next week we've got a big interview, perhaps the biggest we've had so far on the YouTube channel, with Scotland hero, the nation's favourite Australian, Lyndon Dykes. He spoke to us a bit about his journey from factory working to being a Scotland star, wearing the number nine for the country and looking ahead to the Euros, where he will likely lead the line for the nation in its first tournament since 1998. So a really exciting one, that. So do remember to check that out. That'll be out sort of middle of next week time. And as well, with plenty of fixtures going on. We'll have Lewinson versus Aberdeen, which we'll likely have coverage from, as well as the return of the Premiership reviews and stuff next week as well. Well, that's all we've got time for on this one. We hope you have enjoyed. Do remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, 